Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. Now, on to today's story. How Morbius Exposed My Wife's Three-Year Affair Advice Preface, I am M42 she is F42. We have a son who is 8. Married 15 years, been together 20. We have no debt, a healthy sex life, we would have sex every other day, though I did ask for it every day and compromised with her, and are very social people. I'll read any and all advice slash comments, might not respond to everything but I want you to know that your opinion matters. I'm looking for advice and not sympathy. It's true, I wish you didn't have to read a title like that. On April 5th of this year my best friend and I went to go make fun of the horrible Morbius movie on $5 Tuesday, and I saw a suspicious text on my wife's phone. She never leaves her phone around. It was face up on the kitchen counter when I was making our son dinner. For the past year I've had high blood pressure. In the six months prior to the text I stopped sleeping, I'd get two hours tops a night, two months before the text I stopped eating, maybe one meal a day, no snacks. She was distant at home and with our friends. Good thing I don't drink that much geez. The movie started and in the first ten minutes, someone in the theater had a heart attack and they needed to pause the movie. This is when I told my best friend about a weird text I saw on my wife's phone. We had almost 30 minutes to talk about what happened face to face, and she told me to confront. After the movie I found my wife working in the basement, she kissed me and went to use the bathroom, leaving her phone on her desk. The temptation was too strong, I looked, and the texts from this contact were gone. I wrote the number down and went to my computer to google it, and I came up with nothing. Burn a phone. I confront and he's a friend from work. The next day, April 6th, she's panicking. I dig through months of phone records and find they text constantly, between 3 to 5 daily, Thursday nights at bowling, and some Saturday mornings. She assures me he's a friend from work who they talk about work and bowling. When she went to help our son with something, I checked her phone and she deleted the contact. Later that night I curled up in the fetal position on the sofa thinking I was going crazy. April 7th, I'm trying to pull all their text messages to my computer, text chatting with the phone company was tough, I couldn't call because my wife and I both work from home. The language barrier was a problem, then three months worth of texts started to download to her phone at 2.50 pm, not my computer. I hear her curse from her office, I go to confront and I say, hey if he's a friend from work, let's just go through the texts and see, that way my OCD mind can be at peace. She looks me dead in the eyes and says, the truth is that there is someone else and leaves to get our son from school. She comes back and begs me not to talk about it until he goes to bed. She leaves to get him, I tell my best friend. The initial lie. That night she told me that she met him at bowling in March 2019, and that they made out, booked a hotel room and she didn't go. She didn't speak to him again until she was driving past a gas station in 2021 and saw his truck. They exchanged phone numbers and decided to meet at a local hotel. From that point on they met once a month in his truck or the hotel for sex. This continues until March of this year. It was at this point that I admitted that in 2009, 13 years ago, I stepped out of our marriage to X. I know I may have lost some readers here, but I'm not looking for sympathy, I'm looking for advice for what follows from this point on. At the time my state of mind was, I cheated, she cheated, let's get therapy and heal, we have a kid, the house is almost paid off. Let's be better people and parents. May 3rd D-Day Part 2 We started therapy by this point and we were having amazing sex two to three times a day. But she's all of a sudden acting weird. I tell her I need to sync our Google accounts for some reason, and I start in March of 2019 on her maps timeline and I'm seeing several trips to a nearby parking lot to the bowling alley, weekly. The day she claimed she didn't go to the hotel was deleted. Several dates that summer when I was out of town were deleted. Who was watching our kid? 
The fall of 2019 she switched bowling alleys and was driving over an hour to see him weekly. In his truck, in different parking lots all near the old bowling alley. Our first session of therapy was a complete and total lie. She turned the timeline feature off in Jan of 2020. She also initially told me they always used protection, she came clean that they never did. I got phone call records and traced her cell phone every time that she was in the vicinity of his work. They were going to his work and having sex in his truck, in the middle of the day, at least once a month in 2021. May 10th D-Day Part 3 In the fallout from the first session and the lies, I wanted to know more. Wouldn't you? At this point I knew that she saw him frequently in 2019, and they took a break in 2020. From there it was once a month until I saw the texts. I wanted to know how many times she did this at the start of the pandemic that she should would have put our health in jeopardy. What I got was that, instead of her just seeing him a couple times in 2022, she saw him almost every week. She claimed she was trying to end it, well then why was it more frequent? Also claimed that she was lying to protect my feelings, but I think she was lying to cover her tracks. But, is this everything? Is she still trickle-truthing me? She has been spending a lot of time on affair recovery websites and came up with a self-diagnosis of limerence which is an infatuation with a lesser person, I called BS and found a lawyer. Mid-May, end of June. We're still doing therapy but we cannot have a conversation without the word limerence being involved. It was her excuse. It was okay because she wasn't limerent anymore. She claimed, it wasn't about the sex with him and he really sucked in bed. No one has bad affair sex for three years come on. My patience is wearing thin. The therapist said she never heard of limerence. We're in individual therapy as well at this point and our therapists never heard of it. We are still having sex, we are still co-parenting, but our son is noticing that something is off. I have been better about handling this than I think most men would be, but I really lost it when she went on her pre-planned girls weekend trip. I was okay the first two days, but lost it by the third. I wasn't mean, but I was unfiltered about my feelings. To this point I hid the lawyer from her, but when she came home she went through my email and found the proof on June 30th. She was suspicious because I was asking her about her 401k. July. I felt bad about hiding the fact that I had a lawyer, she had every right to be mad at me. The agreements weren't finalized but she agreed to the lawyer's outline, as long as we share custody of our son. Everything was split down the middle except we would keep our own retirement accounts. I was being fair. Throughout the month of July, I'm still hurt, depressed, confused, all the things that come with finding out about what she did. She, though, is working hard sending me videos, articles on recovery, writing daily emails, cleaning, cooking, playing with our son. She is being the mother I always knew she could be, that she wasn't the last three years. I don't need to wait on hand and food, I always thought we were divide and conquer parents. I can cook. I can clean. We do not believe in gender stereotypes at all. August. This brings us to now, she is still writing me daily emails, she is apologetic, remorseful, didn't realize what she had before she almost lost it. Claims the affair fog didn't allow her to see how shifty this guy was. That she had to text him first, she had to drive to him, that he didn't put anything into their relationship except sleep with my wife. I have all the documents from the lawyer ready to be signed. But what I need help with is, am I being manipulated by her lies? How did the sweet girl I met in college turn into this person who sought out public sex in a truck for three years? Was she really trying to end it and is that why he texted at a time that wasn't in their regular scheduled texting times? Is she truly remorseful? Is she going to just wait until I stop watching her every move to do it again? Has she done this before this guy? She wants to wait until April to make the final decision, and I keep waffling. Part of me wants it done now so I can move on with my life, part of me sees the changes she's making. What do you think? Am I a chump who's going to get cheated on again if I stay? Why not divorce and continue seeing one another afterwards? 
I'd give you the freedom to leave if you decide to stick around and things go bad. And it'd be an actual consequence to her actions. She may succeed in getting you to stay, but you'll no longer be married, and each subsequent year would cement that. I'd personally divorce and move on. A multi-year affair isn't anything to sneeze at. More so when you consider how much work she was willing to invest in it. Yes divorce, if reconciliation becomes a possibility, a prenup to protect yourself. But, I have 20 Canadian dollars that she won't go for it. But the depth of lies and the quantity of deception makes me think, she just doesn't want to be a divorced single mother who cheats. What man will want a woman like her? This. But to add on, not only is a multi-year affair nothing to sneeze at, it affected how your wife treated your child. Look at this again, op, you said. Throughout the month of July, I'm still hurt, depressed, confused, all the things that come with finding out about what she did. She, though, is working hard. Sending me videos, articles on recovery. Writing daily emails, cleaning, cooking, playing with our son. She is being the mother I always knew she could be, that she wasn't the last three years. She took everything you gave her for granted. The house. The home. The lifestyle. The child. She is trying to love bomb you and the kid, trying to prove she could have been this person the whole time. But she wasn't. Edit. Again. Look at this part. She though, is working hard. Send me videos, articles on recovery. She doesn't want consequences. The affair never hit her like it did you, at this moment, she is trying to push you to move on. Not to dwell on it, and move on quickly. The damage of an affair, emotion or physical, is something that isn't rushed, that isn't pushed, and is humbly accepted and truthful. So far, I've seen her just keep lying to you up. How hard is a few more, for her? Very good advice. Op, I am sorry for what you are going through but glad to see you are in IC. My eyes locked on this part of your final paragraph. She wants to wait until April to make the final decision. That is an oddly specific request. Why April instead of 3 slash 6 slash 9 months? Is April your anniversary date? Check with your lawyer and make sure that there is not something in the state laws that after X years of marriage alimony becomes more onerous. Maybe it's my paranoia but seeing a month called out makes me feel like there is an ulterior motive. Honestly I think you need to divorce and move on. You gave her multiple chances to come clean and she lied at every step. Even if the last version was the truth and she never does cheat again given the number of times she has lied to you before will make it impossible to ever trust her again. It is far kinder to all parties involved, you and your kids, to just end the marriage now. Good point. I read it as giving me six months to show you I've changed. Which honestly I laughed at because my ex did this after I caught him. He said I'll change I promise and if in six months you still want to divorce me you can. Problem with that is the anger subsides and you just learn to get used to the feeling of sadness and betrayal. Then add in kids and the flip-flopping of upheaval in their lives. Unfortunately I didn't divorce him after those six months and he had only improved those first six weeks. Plus he got better at hiding his infidelity. It was a wasted seven years later and another kid before I caught him red handed again and then left. Right now she's love bombing you. Also three years isn't an affair it's a whole relationship. I had to google the definition of love bombing and you are 100% correct, that is totally what is going on. Totally agree with this. Let me guess, she never got tested for STDs even though she had sex with a guy she barely knew and regular sex with you at the same time, right? Doesn't that already tell you enough about how little she cares about you? She doesn't even care about your health. Is she manipulating you? Of course she is doing that because she knows that she needs to do that to get what she wants, which is that you don't sign the papers. But do you seriously think that she can keep this charade up forever? This is just happening until she feels safe in the marriage again, then she will change. Your marriage will also never again be what it once was. She showed you in great fashion what she is capable of and how little she cares about you. 
what you once had will never get back. To make matters worse and why I think that you should sign the papers is one simple reason. She feels no remorse and doesn't regret what she did, she only regrets that she got caught. If you wouldn't have caught her, then she would be right now planning the next hookup with her lover that is so bad in bed. Please go to a doctor and get tested for STDs. Got tested as soon as I caught her, good looking out. We're clean. Good thing that you are clean. But doesn't change that she never took care to protect your health during her affair. Would you entertain the idea to stay with her as well if she would have given you HIV, AIDS or any other of the not curable diseases? Because she exposed you to the risk without of even blinking with an eye. That tells a lot about the person you think about to reconcile with. That you are clean is pure luck. Good, now DNA test your kid. Remove all doubt and set the records straight since she is trickle truthing you. This guy is not her first one, only the first one you caught her with. Good luck. There is no doubt that this is karma that is coming back to get you. You should have told your wife as soon as it happened but you planned to take that secret to your crave. What really is the difference between you two and why do you think you deserve someone better? You both seem to be cut out of the same cloth. Best comment here. Absolute disregard for his health, absolute carelessness. The movie started and in the first 10 minutes, someone in the theater had a heart attack. Jeez, the movie was that bad. Oh it was that bad. We hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Please comment, like and subscribe. Cheers. Have a wonderful day or night. Wherever you are, 